What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm gonna be going through the hard truth about SMMA that only the pros like me, Iman Godzi, and other big SMA owners know about. This is a niche that has been pushed through multiple people's digital product programs, courses, consultants, you name it, okay? Run an agency, make money, hit 10K a month, and be financially free. And here's the truth. It's hard as fuck. And I'm gonna go through why in today's video. And pitfalls or you know trial and errors that you're gonna have to deal with that I had to deal with that I surpassed. But let me just tell you that running an SMMA that actually hits half a mil a month to a million a month or more is very, very hard. And we've been able to do that. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things that blindsided me that I think you'll want to know. Number one biggest thing was I didn't realize how important leadership, people, and processes were. Now, keep this in mind, in the beginning of your SMMA, you're building funnels to acquire clients. You're building funnels for other clients to also get clients. But what you don't realize is that when you hit a half a million a month, you now have to build out funnels to hire people. And people don't realize that. Oh, we need a hiring funnel. We need a hiring department. I thought the CEO or the CMO could just do all that or the COO could just do the hiring. Here's the thing. You need to have a structured hierarchy to actually be able to not just systemize on autopilot your acquisition, but acquisitioning your actual leadership and bringing A plus leaders into the business. Second thing that I realized about SMA is that it's not about how much you save on payroll or how much your payroll is. It's actually predicated on two KPIs. Revenue per headache or revenue per employee. And these things we don't think about. We're just like, oh, I have a team of five. We make a million a year. Okay, so you have 200K per revenue per employee. That's good, right? You want to be above $175,000 revenue per employee. So if you're not at that stage, it's probably why your margins are suffering or you're dealing with a lot of refunds or bad churn. It means that there's someone on your team who's a bottleneck who's preventing you from growing and scaling and you're not going to pay them enough. This is the thing we had to realize very, very quickly is that as we started hiring more and more and more and started to find better leadership and strategy leads and marketing managers, paying them four or five grand a month was just not feasible. We had to start paying seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a month. And that's because living costs are rising. A lot of corporations are paying that and you're competing against the big conglomerates. Okay. There's big ad agencies and advertising firms on Main Street, in New York City, Wall Street, whatever you want to call it. And they're paying people 10, 15,000 a month. And you have to compete with your culture, your experience and your morals and, and values on how you're going to allow them to grow in their role. Okay. Number three was having really solid onboarding. I know this is very like, I have a video that talks about this that you guys can check out. Um, but that process for onboarding has changed since then. You know, a lot of people just think about onboarding is, oh, the client just pays and books a call. Yeah. That's not really how it works. Okay. The client goes through an onboarding form. You get the right questions. Those questions go to certain departments. It's all through automation, project management, like where do all these departments co-align? Then from there, the client gets on an onboarding call. The onboarding call is taken in a certain way. You ascend the call through onboarding. You book a feedback call. Then the person has expectations. You answer questions and they come into Slack and then now they're actually going through the service. There is way more to the game of onboarding that I didn't realize, which was my slides. I know this is very, you know, oh, this isn't crazy high level, but it is. If you don't have good onboarding slides and you don't have a good ecosystem for people to come into, you're not going to be able to actually scale an agency. You're going to have people who get on onboarding calls who have buyer's remorse, people who get on onboarding calls who ask too many technical sales questions again, and then you have to resell them again. You're going to deal with that. I I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a big, big bottleneck inside of your business. Another big thing that people don't tell you is that if you don't produce results, they're just going to replace you. Okay. If you only brought ads, and you don't build landers or do branding or do organic or do emails, you are replaceable. The more hands you have in a client's business, the more money you're going to make, regardless of what you think, feel, or have been told. If you just do one service really, really well, it doesn't matter. They're going to go somewhere else where maybe they do every single thing 80% as well, because people just care more about the quantity of shit that you're doing. Yes, they like quality, but at the same time, if you're taking too long on quality and not doing enough quantity, the client's going to get pissed. So maybe you're just an ad agency right now who works with brick and mortar. Okay. Go find a way to run TikTok ads for them. Do Google, SEO, website redesign, conversion rate boosting, organic. Like you got to start doing more for the client or they're going to leave and find somebody else who can do all of it for them, even if it's not as high quality. There's also a big thing right now shifting in the ad space, which is patience. Clients have less patience right now. So fast actions, quick wins when they get into the ecosystem. Don't just 
just tell the client, hey, uh, it's gonna take you X amount of days to get launched. See you in your chat. No, you need to give that client good value on the onboarding call to give them a quick win. Like, hey, there's this one thing we can implement right now that's gonna get you activated and give you a quick win. If you can't activate the client, you're gonna have them buyers remorsing or finding someone else who can give them faster wins because they might come to a YouTube video of mine, get a quick win, and then they're gonna buy from me. So make sure that you're also playing that role of, hey, you're not just here to spend money with us, you're actually here to get value, and here's how you're gonna get value. We're gonna give you value today, even on your onboarding call. They want quick wins. Maybe fixing their sales script, an opt on their landing page, a piece of copy, a creative, maybe a current ad that could be fixed. Whatever it is, you need to help them get a quick win. The last thing that I wanna talk about is as you grow and scale, your margins are going to decrease. I mean, you have to increase your prices. By increasing your prices, you're bringing better value people in your ecosystem, but also you have to offer stack. Don't just keep the same prices forever because they've been working and working and working. And just because you're taking on more clients, do you think that your quality is gonna drop? That means that your systems are faulty and your people are faulty. So that's the biggest thing. And those are the biggest things by far that I've learned that people have lied to about SMMA. It is a very hard business model to scale. I've been able to do it efficiently. It took me you know, a good amount of years. And I just wanna share those stories with you. So if you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.